게임은 재밌으면 된다니까? 불멸의 전사 2. Can out be all in a very nice fashion. Yeah, um, so our next game will be on the like crest. Remember this is the all kill format, so we're going to see a new play come out for CJ and Classic will remain in the booth for SK Telecom T1 and I'm looking at the statistic right now. Two and seven on Lara like Crest. That's pretty awful for CJ. Yeah, I mean, who's gonna bite the bait here? Like, who's going to be the sacrificial lamb that goes out to classic it's, here it's on, definitely, on Lara It's definitely Lara not gonna be hero. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. No, Possibly not Hush. Hush is known for being the PvP sniper. Yeah. But <laughs> I remember the past two two PvPs that Classic has played. He shreked SOS on King Zedong, and he shreked Zest on Lara yeah. like Crest. So. We, we talk about Hush being the PvP sniper because that's essentially his one big positive side, right? But at the same time, can you really compare him to Classic? And I, th I think that's what you're trying to say. So, uh, we, is it Hush? Could it be Bunny? Could be Bunny. Crest, you could know? be Ragnarok. Ragnarok has uh, shown a lot of idea. interesting strategies up his sleeve. Uh, the, you know, the weird Niner strategies yeah. that 50-50, they work or they don't. And also, Lerlac Crest, not a bad map for Zerg, especially if you get those spawn points that are pretty close. You can begin to harass the back rocks and put the pressure onto the Protoss and not let him turtle like mm. he did in that game on uh, on uh, Dust Towers. So. Yeah. Uh, May not be a, a bad choice, actually. I think Ragnarok would out. be a very good choice, actually, uh, now, that, now that she said it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I tend to agree with you, actually. I, actually, I, I, def know. I definitely don't think it should be Hero. No. Too early, too early. Too early, not the best map. It's an it's a PvP. You know, you took out SOS and Zest. Do you really want to send out Hero? You definitely um, want to save Hero for the likes of Innovation, like Dream and Dark, if we see him. Yeah. Uh, but we, we also have to consider what the next maps are. So we have Orbital Shipyard, Frost, and King Sejong. So if the CJ player does win on Lower Light Crest, will they do well on Orbital Shipyard if they get to there? Not the best Zerg map we've yeah. ever seen. We see so many PVTs on that map, it's ridiculous, and I think there's a reason for that. So maybe that would be an argument against Ragnarok. Also, Bunny's been doing better than Ragnarok. Ragnarok had that one big run in SSL, and that, that essentially just like fluke. he disappeared after that. Yeah. You know? Came out in Pro League a couple times, did not do well. So maybe Bunny's the choice then. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, maybe that's why this is taking a long time because they're not. You know, they're still deciding, sure. I guess. I mean, the CJ players haven't even joined the lobby yet, so maybe they're still deliberating. Yeah, yeah. seems that way. Uh, of course, Classic, as you said before, it is the all-kill format, so Classic does get to come out here once again. We'll see if he can get a, a two-kill, yeah. or perhaps if, even uh, an all-kill. If Classic does lose, I mean, there's so much death on the SK Telecom T1 lineup that... You could basically just get a hat. There's so many choices. You could get a hat and then put all the <laughs> SKT players' names in it and just blind yeah. pick it. I'm like, maybe you take out Impact and Myungshik, and then everyone else, <laughs> even Myungshik, I'm like... And, and, and it's like, sorry, that plays. <laughs> yeah, well. All right. Zound, Zound comes out, yeah. like, oh, man, the, the hidden, here we the go. The hidden card. Yeah. But uh, we see the player in the lobby right now. We're not going to spoil it for you guys. Yeah, we, we know what race he is, and that says a lot about what player he is. So guys, we are going to get the reveal for you here on who CJ's second player is that will be coming out here on Lurlac Crest to challenge Classic in game number two. It is Bunny. Bunny, hippity hop, here we go. And I think Bunny has come out here instead of Ragnarok because of what we said before. The next map is yeah. Orbital Shipyard. Orbital Shipyard is not that great of a map for Zerg players. So if Bunny does somehow win on Lurlac Crest, it's going to give him a bit of a momentum advantage coming to Orbital Shipyard. Yeah, I like the choice. I definitely do like the choice. He is going up against Classic, so it is going to be a hard game for him, but as you said before, made it to the round of 16 of GSL. He's 2-6 and six here at Pro League. Hasn't had the best time in these best of ones, but hopefully he can show up a little bit better here tonight. Classic did get one kill so far and waits for the game to start so he can challenge his second opponent. Yeah, uh, I'm actually curious to see how Classic's going to respond to this game. But we're going to go into game right now. Game two here of the Bronze Challenger match. SKT versus CJ Antis. Classic against Bunny. Let's get into it.
Up here in the top left in the orange for SK Telecom T1, it is Classic back again. And spawning here at the top right as the Yellow Terran. Second play for CJ answers here, it is Bunny. And we're here on Lerolac Crest. And we actually got horizontal spawns here. And if you remember a couple of weeks ago, Samsung did play against SK Telecom T1. Classic was sent out on King Sage York Station and he played against Reality. And Reality showed that really awesome proxy factory with the tanky back play yeah. that took out Classic. And I'm curious to see whether we'll see this on Lola Crest, especially with the horizontal spawns that we have right here. This I guy's mean, coming to the army. Poor guy. Actually, I think on Wednesday is the uh, the army reserves training. I heard I heard uh, some people that I know talk about it today. So uh, tidbit, I guess. Yep. Yeah, just a little update on what's going on here in Korea. Yeah. And their Welcome army. To, uh, Korea in, in case you guys were interested, <laughs> just a little bit of that. Um, oh, you were telling me something actually about today. It's coming of age day. Yeah, yeah. I, I was told it's like adult day here. <laughs> And basically, if you go to like any major city, like or urban area, uh -huh. uh, you have people selling roses. You can buy a rose for a dollar. Excuse me, and then you can give that rose to someone who's turned uh, come of age, I guess, here in Korea. Yep. But it's very different to what they have in Japan, which is uh, their coming of age is way more serious. Uh, everyone dresses up, everyone celebrates, and goes to the izakayas and drinks a lot of sake and yeah. stuff. Uh, here well, in Korea, it's very tame, I guess. Oh, I mean, they, they get the rose, and then later they go out with their classmates, and they uh, yeah. they have a good time, yeah. for sure. It, it, it's probably less of a tradition, but more so just what you do. I mean, kind uh, of what uh, you do when you're 21, right, I mean, in, in, in Korea, they have so many weird holidays, like Black Day, White Day. <laughs> Val well, Valentine's Day is a normal holiday, but yeah, I, I find uh, Black Day the most yes. hilarious. Where you eat jajamyeon if uh, you don't have a date by yeah. the, was it 13th of April? <laughs> I think I think it's that, yeah, or 13th of March. No, One March is White Day. Oh right. Well, we do have the Scout coming out here, and the Reaper does deny it a bit, but Classic will know he is in the top right after getting denied there, and he's going to try to send out another probe. Yeah, Classic definitely needs to know what Bunny is doing here with these uh, horizontal oh. spawns. A lot of shenanigans Slips happening. by. Yeah. What? <laughs> okay. Oh, and slips by again. Does the uh, And this is big because the Mothership Corps is joining this, and the probe is going to get over here, and he can put down some pylons. Yes. Yeah. The command center is finished, but this Mothership Corps can actually do a lot of damage combined with this Adept if Bunny's not careful. And as you said, there's a pylon there. Reaper comes back, but... Bounces that probe, but with the the protection of the adept and the mothership core, I think these pylons should be able to get down here. Unless Bunny does, you know, really overcommits to stopping this by pulling SCVs, but it looks like he's just going to let it happen. Mm. I'm actually surprised that Bunny hasn't put down the supply depots yet, even tried to do any sort of damage. I guess he's just waiting for the factory to complete. But this supply depot is going to go down here. Spy Depot goes down, and that'll be the first casualty. Overcharge comes down and snipes one of the Marines here, and now he's getting to work on a second Supply Depot. This is annoying because you have to remake these Supply Depots. Your barracks is under attack now. That's one of your major production facilities this early on in the game. And we see Cyclone here to deal with that Mothership Core. I'm not really sure if Cyclone's the best option because he can just run away. He's just waiting for uh, as many Marines as he can get out of this reactor, but once that Reacted barracks goes down. It's gonna be very hot. Uh, Bunny is gonna be very sealed and pressed oh. to try and get production out. He lifts, and that barracks just barely survives with about a hundred health. And Cyclone comes out. He immediately has to back off lest he lose his mothership core. But he's done the damage. You know that that really didn't cost Classic all too much. Just one pylon and some mothership core energy. Yeah, Bunny lose Bunny missing out on that probe is huge. If he caught that probe out, then he could have been uh, able to defend from that attack. That classic did, but we see a scan come here from Bunny. He's gonna scout all of what Classic's doing right now. He doesn't see that the third base up though. Yeah, that's a pretty nice scan. I mean, he sees the Chrono Boost on the Twilight Council, so you can assume one of the two upgrades is coming out here. Blink going to be the choice for Classic. And as the uh, Medivac coming out here from Bunny, it looks like he want, may want to do some harassment with the Widow Mines and the Marines. We'll just have to wait and see how this goes, but no doubt about it, Classic is in the clear lead so far in this game. 
Oh yeah. Nice little scan here. Gonna take out an observer. Deny some um, scouting. But he may have seen that medevac actually come out with the widow mine, so he may have some idea that this is coming down. This drop, in fact, is going to scout the third base, and uh, it's an interesting location, not behind the rocks. We we'll see gateway explosion here from Classic taking the third as well. But notice the observer placement of Classic. It's got that observer there at the 12 o'clock position. It's going to be able to scout out any medevac drops that do happen. And Knowing Classic is going to be well prepared for any drop that he decide, uh, Donnie decides to do. Yeah, these positions are pretty nice for Classic because you don't have to overmake observers. Uh, he already has three, <laughs> as I say that, so wants to be extra safe. But as you were talking about, that one observer is going to see the one main path for the medevac coming in here. And he's got all, all of his units in position already. Like, this is not going to happen. Blink comes oh. through and he might lose that medevac. Oh. oh, barely gets out. But here comes the Liberator. But I think that medevac has done its duty right now. There's no way he's going to be able to sneak that meta back in as uh, uh, Cyclone does tank, Pylon Overcharge attacks. Cyclone had a death wish, I suppose, trying to get that Mothership Core. Now it's only Marines with no medevacs taking damage. Liberator's denying some mining in the main, but this army of uh, Bunny is taking massive losses in the middle of the map. Yeah, these Marines are just caught down here with their pants down. And without the combat shields, there's just uh, not too much health that Bunny can work with with those Marines. And now the third is up for Classic. He's going to have a nice economy going for him. This is not the prettiest game I've ever seen for Bunny, that's for sure. Uh, really just having tr trouble getting off the ground in the first place. Had a rough time dealing with the pylon maneuver and the overcharges by Classic. He is going for his own third base now on the low ground. This is going to be scouted right as it finishes, actually, by Classic. And it feels like here that Bunny has barely any production facilities compared to Classic. It feels like right now Classic's just got... He's just one step ahead of Bunny. I mean, I mean look, look at Bunny's base. He's only got, what, three, four barracks. Classic has six plus gateways to work with. And he's completely shutting down every any sort of attempt that Bunny tries to drop. And Bunny tries to drop there and doesn't work. Yeah, he, he gets out one Widow Mine. <laughs> And he loses both. He forces a pull, but he loses everything in the drop. And Classic only losing one probe there. Stuff just not going well for Bunny. Yeah, Bunny's trying to do something here, trying to reclaim map dominance, taking over that watchtower in the middle of the map. But this uh, Classic has so many units here out on the map that he could easily take that watchtower back. Yeah, I and was going to say, like, oh, oh no! no! <laughs> I was going to say Classic could just walk across the map and kill him, but I wasn't sure if he recognized it yet, but here we go. That gateway explosion coming to fruition. Force field's coming here. down. There's only one bunker that gets force fielded off. There's just way too many years here for Classic. I highly doubt that Bunny's going to be able to defend from this. Uh, Widow Mine gets off, but SCV's being pulled and a small concave here for Bunny, but there's just way too many upgraded Burdos units just wrecking this Terran right now. Yeah, and the more that Bunny decides to stim, those medivacs are going to lose their energy on there. And Classic actually has a nice position here. He's really able to snipe this all of man without overcommitting too much. Yeah, he's actually just zoning out the army with all the SCVs too by shading his adepts. And Bunny has no choice but to wait. The only way he'll have a better chance is maybe some Liberators come out. He can try to set up some sort of siege, and he is mining from his third base, but Classic now 40 supply, 50 supply ahead, and he's going to go for the attack. Yeah, we see the Adept shade into the army of Bunny. These Stalkers just doing so much damage as well, the Adept, and the Blink forward as well. The SCVs come out here for Bunny, but it's not, too, it's not enough for Bunny. It's not enough. All the SCVs go down, and the entire army is decimated, and that should be game number two. Going to Classic once again. The Liberators are going to come out here, but they'll be immediately sniped. And that was his last hope. With that is his hopes of the game going bye-bye. Not hun over 100 supply for Classic compared to 26 of Bunny GG. GG. There you go, Classic taking two in a row, making it look very, very simple. Very simple, very clean, very easy play there from Classic. It all started with that pylon overcharge at the front base. Not to, uh, Bunny not taking care of that probe, not taking care of the Mothership Core, <laughs> and it was just exponential damage after that event. We, we saw the medevac attempt with the Widow Mines to do harassment. That got completely shut down, and <laughs> it, was, it was a disastrous game from Bunny there. Yeah. From start to finish, Classic was in control and made it look very easy, as we were saying. I, 
we were talking about this in the beginning. Biel really had to win his game against Classic because once he goes down, they're not going to send out Hero on their leg crest, so they're immediately down 0-2 uh, because Biel and Bunny were not able to close it out here. So CJ in a dire spot. No doubt we'll be seeing that guy who is talking to Bunny right now a little bit later on. Yeah, no doubt that Hero will most likely be the last player for CJ, but uh, I'm really not sure who the next player should be on Orbital Shipyard because let's think of the options CJ has. They have Ragnarok, they have Hush, and that's Hero. It. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> they have three more players, and this is what we were talking about. Very thin lineup. They don't have uh, they don't have too many options here, GTR, so. Orbital Shipyard, I don't know if you send out Ragnarok. I don't even know if you send out Hush. But can you send out Hero? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think sending out Hero would be a very big risk for the CJ team. Yeah, well, we're probably going to be going, guys, to another three-minute break here, as is the way of Pro League after game number two. So we'll see you in a bit.